It can offer endless hours of adventure with captivating storylines and exciting characters in immersive virtual worlds. Across the world, gamers spend 3 billion hours a week playing. 9% are considered gaming addicts. This year, gaming addiction will be listed as a mental health disorder by the World Health Organization. Are gamers becoming victims? And should those who play video games be worried? In the United States, 5 million people spend more than 40 hours a week playing video games, the equivalent of a full-time job. And in some Asian countries, it is already considered a public health problem. Many countries have private addiction clinics and boot camps to treat addicts. I'm sometimes tempted to play games, but very quickly I realize that that is not an option for me because I realize that once I start, I don't know when I'm going to stop. And according to one study, addiction to video games can contribute to anxiety, low self-esteem and depression, affecting gamers both psychologically and physically. But if played in moderation, can games be beneficial? Studies have shown that action games can improve attention to detail. And one study suggests that video games can help children with dyslexia. Brain teasing games have been shown to slow the process of brain aging for up to seven years. And there are even benefits to video games in medicine. Young doctors with previous exposure to video games have shown fewer errors and faster completion in surgery. And video game champions can earn thousands of dollars competing. I would not have to say that you would 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 have to say that Это не как обыденное, то, что ты просыпаешься, тебе приходится играть. А наоборот, именно любовь, чтобы потренироваться, чтобы улучшить себя и улучшить себя. The benefits of gaming go well beyond entertainment. But at what point does a game become a problem? As we kill time glued to our screens, are we winning or losing?